Hey everyone, welcome to episode 4. I apologize right away, I'm a little bit under the weather here, got a little bit of a sore throat, so I might be clearing my throat here a little bit, but I did want to get this wiring um, episode out, and I want to make a full episode on the wiring. Uh, Form dot, FormBot did an awesome job on the wiring, they supplied excellent amount of wires, um, the length was correct, everything was basically crimped for you, I didn't really have to do much of anything here, so... It's relatively straightforward. Um, a big disclaimer, I am not an electrician. There's 110 volts here. Consult a professional. Um, I'm not responsible for any injury or anything like that. Um, you know, do your research. If you're unsure of things, definitely consult a professional. So um, I just found a guide online to actually wire up the um, 110 kind of switch here. I don't have the pr proper printed piece here for this particular switch. Um, there's two different types. There's one all integrated like this one and there's one that has a separate switch and a separate plug. My printed part is for the separate one so I'll just have to print an ABS uh, part. This does fit into a skirt on the back. So This wiring is pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go into too much on that. Um, like I say it's just 110. You got your ground here, load and then neutral. So let's talk about the uh, SSR here. So a SSR is what stands for a solid state relay. This is essentially just a switch, but instead of a button or um, something that you can press, it's activated by a signal. So if we look on the SSR here, we can see here's a 24 volts in and here is our load out. So this is, I mean, any range from 24 to 220 volts. This is rated for 10 amps. So essentially what we're doing here is we're taking the load from the power supply. It's coming out into the solid state relay. On the other side of this load, it's going to the bed. The other bed lead comes in and goes into the neutral side. We effectively now have a circuit, right? We have load coming out, going to the solid state relay, comes out the other side, goes into the bed, goes through the bed resistor, the heater, all that kind of stuff, comes back out, goes back into the power supply on the neutral. The solid state relay in the open position is not allowing current to flow between these two points. As soon as this receives signal, a 24 volt signal from the actual main board, it will close the circuit, which completes it. That's what allows 110 volts. This is our 110 volt side of the power supply. This would allow 110 volts to go into the actual bed. This SSR, it's solid state, so it's not mechanical. It doesn't make any noise. This SSR will turn on and off, on and off really fast. That's how you hold maintain temperature on a 110 volt heated bed. This SSR is turning on and off really fast to maintain that temperature. Something also, uh, a reminder here that I didn't touch on in the previous video is make sure you're adding a ground wire. You can see here I'm grounding my bed. This is very, very important. You want to ground your bed. You'll notice I also grounded my frame as well. I've removed some of the anodizing here and I've grounded it. Okay, we are working with 110 volts. If this ever this 110 ever came in contact with the frame and it's not grounded, you'll touch this frame and you will get shocked. So ground your frame and you have to ground your build plate because the build plate doesn't actually contact your frame, right? It's separated. So we need to ground this piece of metal and we need to ground this piece of metal. That's very, very important. Number one rule, always make sure you're grounding this. But essentially that's an SSR, what, how an SSR works. It's taking 24 volts from your bed signal. So this is our hot end here. This is our bed. So when you tell Clipper, hey, I want to heat my bed up, it sends a 24 volt signal out here to the SSR. SSR turns on, which closes the connection and allows 110 volts to go to the bed. And that's what heats the beds up, heats the bed up. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, 
The FormBot kit does come with a ground wire. So you can see here, I have my earth right here. It has a ground wire that comes to here and it also has a very big long ground wire already made with an eyelet for your bed. So again, FormBot already did the work for you. Very, very easy wiring on that part. Okay. So then we're gonna talk about the 24 volts. 24 volts positive, 24 volts negative. Those have two big wires that come out to the actual uh, Big Tree Tech Octopus. Little bit different here. This is um, negative and positive, power for the motors only. I originally just plugged these two in here and I was having a whole bunch of problems. These two here are power for the board. So what you do here is you take 24 volts from your power supply, positive and negative. You put negative in here, positive in here, and then there's another set of wires that come with the actual uh, kit. And it takes the negative from here, comes over here into this negative, takes the power from here, comes over here into this positive. That then powers the board. So you have a 24 volt connection powering your motors and you have a 24 volt connection powering your board. Don't forget to do that. And make sure you watch polarity. It goes negative, positive, negative, positive, okay? Pay close attention to the stepper layout here for the Trident. There will be pictures online on the Voron documentation that shows an octopus for a 2.4, not a Trident. The 2.4 has an extra Z motor, okay? So let's go over this. We have our X stepper and our X motor, or I believe uh, this is called A and B. So, and again, these are labeled. If you see, uh, if I can get a good shot here, you see how it says motor zero? That's documented in the config file. You, you'll know exactly where motor B goes and motor A goes. Very, very straightforward. So don't worry about this wiring. This is motor B. I believe that's uh, motor zero. It plugs into motor zero. This is motor A. It plugs into motor one. Okay. It's in the config file. We'll of course go over the clipper config, but just so you know that anyways. So we have our motor B, motor A. Okay. We have our first Z motor. Okay. Um, I believe that is rear left, and it'll say that in the config file, rear left goes to motor one, or sorry, motor two dash one. You'll notice here there's another motor two dash two. These ports share the same stepper driver. Do not plug a Z motor in here. Or don't plug anything into here. Just leave this empty. These are for if you had a printer that had dual Z motors and you didn't want to control them independently for whatever reason, you could plug them both in here and run them off of one stepper, but we're controlling every Z with a specific stepper. So again, don't plug anything to the very next one. And you can see here, it says motor two dash one or motor two underscore one and motor two underscore two. These are the same stepper. So again, in the clipper config, it'll say your first Z, which is the rear left. You're gonna plug that into motor two and that's this stepper. We're then gonna go to motor three. That I believe is your, sorry, your rear center. So this is your front left. And this is your rear center. This is your uh, re front right. So again, front left, center rear, front right. And again, these actual ports are all labeled in Clipper, which we'll go into, okay? We then skip a port. This is where your um, 2.4 stepper would be and you'd have another Z motor. This is a Trident, so we only have three. So we skip this and we're running our extruder off the next one. Now, this doesn't matter at all. You can still put this stepper driver here and run your extruder off of this motor if you want to. You would just need to change your config file. I'm just using the standard um, Voron config, which uses uh, motor six as the extruder, but you can use motor five of the extruder if you want to. I'm just trying to keep it simple so I could copy and paste the config file. So again, take a good look, pay attention to the stepper drivers. Very straightforward. Again, it's all documented. B 
Because we tram the Z using the motors, there is an order to how Clipper, which motor it activates first, second, and third when it trams. So make sure you're following, you know, right rear, center rear, uh, right left, all that kind of stuff, and plugging those in. And again, these this wiring comes all pre-crimped. You can only plug it in one way, and it only plugs one way into the stepper, okay? So down here we talked about, again, hot end. These don't really uh, matter too much, but they are uh, positive and negative colored here. So hot end, positive, negative. We have our heated bed, which go to the SSR, positive, negative. Down here we have our fans, fan zero and fan one, okay? Right here we have our probe. And this one you definitely need to pay attention to. We're grabbing power, which is 24 volts. This is the blue cable. And ground, which is red. The wiring color is really dumb. I don't know why it's like this. Uh, Formbot actually didn't include a really good probe wiring harness. That was I was a little bit disappointed with that. So, but just note, that this is ground or this is 24 volts this is ground and this is signal but not for the type of probe we're using so i don't have a cable here we're actually plugging our signal into this port here okay so again it's black you can't really see it too well but we're plugging it into to this right here so this is how the wiring goes do look at your probe um, wiring on the front of the probe because the probe has different colors for di its wiring. On the probe I believe brown is voltage so brown would go to your blue wire and then blue I think is ground so blue would go to your red wire and then black would go to a black wire that plugs into your to your signal. Again take your time it is documented, just look at the wiring on your probe, right on the front of the probe, it shows you what green is, what blue is, and what um, black is on the probe. And just make sure you're plugging this in the same way I have it. Okay? So, end stops. Again, I'm using HAL Effect end stops, so they use a magnet and the board that comes with the FormBot kit. So, what you'll see here is the X cable has power, ground, and the X end stop signal. You'll notice Y just has a signal wire. This is because X and Y are on the same board. Y is getting power from the X cable. So these go to the same board. We have our X end stop cable and we have our Y end stop cable. This here is our Z probe end stop. And um, if I can show you that pretty easily, yeah. It's this right here, so just a little uh, mechanical switch here. That's what your nozzle touches to actually set your nozzle height. Okay, so that's why we have a X, Y, Z, and we also have a probe. Okay, so your four kind of end stops there. Next thing we have here is our thermistors. Hot end thermistor and our heated bed thermistor. Pretty straightforward, uh, very easily documented on the, the Voron web page it shows exactly where to plug those in pretty straightforward and honestly i mean that's the wiring it's not there's not a whole lot there formbot has everything labeled very very well you can see here thermistor you know the bed hotbed wasn't labeled but it's very easy to tell what wires are coming from where i know these wires here are for my Z. And there's only one thermistor wire that comes through here, right? The white wires are power for the bed, which I know, and there's a ground wire. That's all there was, right? Same thing on this side. There's only one stepper motor wire. It comes up here, and I know where this plugs into, right? This is my B motor. It plugs right into here. Very straightforward. This here is the biggest bundle of wires that you have, right? This is your hot end wire. This is all your fans. This is this stepper motor. This is your magnetic end stop wiring. But again, all of it is labeled except the stepper motor isn't labeled, but you can't, it's, there's only one type of plug, right? You'll know that it's a stepper motor wire. So, so yeah, it's honestly not that daunting. It's pretty straightforward. They actually do have a really good guide on the Voron documentation. 
um, portal. So if you go to Voron's website, click documentation and it'll take you to another site that has the full wiring, shows you how to kind of wire these all together. It just doesn't have wiring and diagram for this, but I just looked up an image online. So if you're unsure, um, you can just ask me on Discord and I can post an image of the wiring that I did for this. But but yeah, they're pretty straightforward. Again, we'll take a quick view here. Um, I just have my USB cable hanging out here. I've already tested the printer, it functions perfectly. So that's kind of it for the wiring diagram and the wiring uh, routing. Uh, a little bit longer video, but I wanted to make sure I was as clear as possible that I could be here on the um, electronics, like I say. Just take your time on this part of it, double check, make sure you're going from, you know, positive is the positive, negative is the negative, don't be flipping anything. Um, again, your load comes in here into the SSR. This is just a switch. Um, make sure, make sure you ground everything. Anything that's metal that wouldn't normally be grounded, like your frame and also the metal bed, those definitely need to be grounded. And then we just have our negative and po our positive and negative 24 volts. Those come to the board. So again, if you have any questions, please let me know. I, I really appreciate all the new subscribers. Um, we're growing quite nicely. Um, we have a nice uh, Discord server going on. Um, so that'll end it for this episode. Next episode is going to be going over Clipper and the setup and that type of thing. So again, thanks everyone.